The previous videos have dealt with one-dimensional arrangement of atoms. Well, the world isn't one-dimensional. We've got to get up to three dimensions eventually. So now in this video we'll start and go to a 2D system where we'll have a square array of atoms and we'll look at how the crystal orbitals form in that system. In this video we start with the s orbitals. Stay with it. Right, let's take another step towards three-dimensional crystals by extending our approach to two-dimensional materials. Specifically, we'll take a look at a square lattice of atoms. And we're going to now need to quantify the overlaps of the signs of the atomic wave functions in the crystal orbitals along two different directions, x and y. And so we're going to require two k vectors, kx, ky, and we're going to need to count the number of sign changes in the atomic orbitals along each axis. So as we had in the one-dimensional system, k can vary from 0, no sign changes, all the way up to pi over a, where we have alternating signs. But now both of them can do this. And we'll explore the different relationships between k, x, and k, y, and we'll see we'll generate different types of bonding non-bonding and anti-bonding interactions in the resultant crystal orbitals. Let's start with S-type crystal orbitals and we'll begin at kx equals ky equals zero and so the notation I'm going to use for that are just these parentheses with zero zero kx and ky equals zero. From what's gone before we know that that means there are no sign changes in the LCAO approach to putting together the wave function of the crystal orbital. Let's look at s orbitals. Along the x direction then the wavelength is infinite, k is zero. We just have plus plus plus. All of the s orbitals overlap in phase. So that's the x direction and now the y direction they must be doing the same thing. We'll take another infinite row of the s orbitals and now in that y direction Similarly, it's plus, plus, plus. They're all adding in phase. And so in both directions, because they're s orbitals, they're all bonding. And you can't get more stable than that. Let's now change kx, but we'll keep ky fixed as equal to zero. In other words, along the y direction, we'll maintain the absence of any sign changes. But along x, we'll allow that to happen and we'll go to the extreme case where the value of kx is pi over a. And so again our notation is pi over a comma zero. That means along the x direction the signs are alternating, along the y direction there are no sign changes. So let's take a look at our orbital picture. For this crystal orbital, here's x, now plus minus plus minus, so opposite phases with my neighbors, everybody's out of phase. But along the y direction, we're not changing the signs. And so we're going to have to lay down that same row with the same phases, with the same signs, to make sure there are no sign changes along y. There's our picture of this crystal orbital. Along the x direction, alternating signs, anti-bonding. Along the y direction, no sign changes. So even along this channel here, it's all blues and all oranges with respect to along the y direction, they are overlapping in phase. There isn't a sign change, and so they're bonding in that direction. And so as we go from the 0, 0 to the pi over a 0, our energy is increasing. But just note, not as much as it could, because at least one direction is still bonding. Let's take a look at the crystal orbital midway between these two. So we're still keeping ky equal to zero, but let's uh, look at kx equals one half pi over a. So what does that mean for x? That means we have a wavelength of 4a, and if we remember from our 1d systems, that's plus plus, then a sign change, no sign change, then another sign change. So that's what's happening in the kx direction, and this is actually non-bonding in that direction. Along y, we'll keep everything the same. We won't allow any phase changes. We're just going to repeat the same arrangement. So, no sign changes along y still. Pi over 2a 
along x. x direction, non-bonding. The overall net result is non-bonding. But along the y direction, because ky is equal to zero, this crystal orbital is bonding. Let's look at the orientation dependence, where before we had ky was kept at zero and we changed kx from zero to pi over a. Let's do the reverse, so we'll keep kx equal to zero and we'll change ky from zero to pi over a. And we're going to find we sort of get a symmetry in the system because it's a square lattice and because the orbitals are symmetric. Let's go back to our zero, zero case, same as before kx and ky both zero, x and y no sign changes, everybody bonding, everybody in phase. Now keep kx equal to zero. So now along the x direction we're staying all in phase. Doesn't matter whether they're shaded all oranges or all blues, they're all in phase along this x direction. There are no changes in sign. But now along the y direction, whatever was an orange must now be a blue plus, minus, plus, minus in terms of the alternating signs of the contributing atomic orbitals. And so now we see the x direction is bonding and the y direction is anti-bonding, the reverse of last time. And halfway along, it's a 90 degree flip from the crystal orbital in our previous slide. So this is the 0, 1 half pi over ray crystal orbital, where again kx0, no sign changes along x, all in phase. But along the y direction, now we've got this lambda 4a. So plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, etc. Now we'll keep kx equal to ky. So in the previous two examples, kx and ky were varying independently. Now we'll have the inequality in terms of a vector direction, we're always maintaining kx equal to the value of ky, starting from 0, 0, and ending up at pi over a, pi over a. So here we are, starting point 0, 0, that's going to be the same as we had in the previous slides, and now we systematically change them, and remember we've got an infinite number of possibilities, but the last one, at the highest value, is pi over a, and that'll be our pi over a, pi over a state, because we're keeping them equal is no sign changes. Now we'll go to this extreme where along x and y the signs are alternating. So here we are, x, one color to the next, one color to the next, or in terms of thinking of the signs of the wave functions, should be used to this now, plus minus plus minus. Now we've got to do the same in the y direction. So the next one I add here, this has got to be blue, this has got to be orange, this has got to be blue, etc. There we are. Keep on going, and we see along both directions the wave function signs of the AOs are alternating, the colors are alternating. So now I'm anti bonding not just along X but also along Y. So this is the least favorable crystal orbital, it must have the highest energy. Just note here as I start to keep KX equal KY. I start to bring out some other periodicities in the resultant crystal orbitals here along this diagonal direction. We won't really get into that. In this case, when I go to pi over a pi over a, I'm going to get the highest energy crystal orbital as a larger increase in energy. Well, we could look at the case which lies in midway in between these two again. Pi over 2a pi over 2a, so they're still equal. It's just now in both directions, we're non-bonding. So a periodicity of 4a along x and also along y. Plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, etc. We're starting to explore crystal orbitals in different directions of that square. Those different directions in the lattice are given special symbols. And these can be kind of hard to remember. The concepts are more important, perhaps, than remembering the symbols themselves. But let's just quickly talk about them. Kx equal Ky equals zero, where they're both zero. This is called the gamma point. It's also the center of the Bruin zone. It's an important concept that's dealt with in your solid-state physics classes, which we will just bypass. 
if kx is equal to 0 and ky is pi over a, so now I've got ky as large as it could be, kx is kept at 0, that's called the x point, that would be this direction. If I do the opposite, kx is pi over a, ky is 0, then this is called the y point. And of course I can have an infinite number of crystal orbitals along this way and along this way towards x. And then along the diagonal, where infinite number of combinations and crystal orbitals, but in every single one of them we'll find the value of kx is equal to ky, and where it's pi over a, pi over a, that is called the m point. Often we want to explore the energetic changes as we're going along certain directions. So as I go from the gamma point along either the x or y direction, then I'm keeping one of the k's equal to zero. That means it has no nodes, whereas the other one, the number of nodes is progressively increasing until it reaches a maximum where the signs alternate. As I go from gamma to the m point, then the number of nodes along x and y are equal, because kx is equal to ky. There's the maximum number of nodes at the end point. In a band diagram, the energetic changes along these different directions are typically plotted using one axis. The k axis is extended to show the energy of the orbitals at the gamma point, the energy of the orbitals at the x point, the energy of the orbitals at the m point. An extra gamma point sort of added at the end, so along one axis we can go from gamma to m and see the changes in the energies of the orbitals. And the length here is a over root 2, because from t to m, that's root 2 times the length from t to y. Then I go from t to x, and that's equivalent energetically to t to y, so typically they're both not included. Then this length is a. And then we could sort of join the dots from x to m to look at the energetic changes as we go along this direction, which is equivalent to going from t to y. Now we're going to put together a 2D band diagram for s orbitals, and we're going to quantify the orbital energies versus k along all these major directions. First, we'll build our diagram, usual way, energy plotted on my y-axis. This is my k-axis. But now we're going to look at the energy of the orbitals at our so-called gamma point, 0, 0 for kx and ky, on our x point, where either x or y is 0 and the other one is pi over a. So again, at x, that means that one of them is pi over a and the other one is 0. That distance is equal to a, whatever that atom-atom separation is. So here I am at my gamma point. This is my visual picture of what's happening with the s orbitals. There are no sign changes. Everything's in phase. Everything's bonding. At the x point, that means either kx is pi over a and ky is equal to 0, or kx is equal to 0 and ky is equal to pi over a. And for a square symmetry, it's kind of the same thing. Our picture is just rotated by 90 degrees. Either way, from our previous slide, we saw in one direction I'm bonding, and the other direction I'm anti-bonding. So, the energies are running uphill, right? All bonding to something that's not completely anti-bonding, because one direction is hanging on and bonding, and the other one is anti-bonding. Either way, we're going up in energy. So again, along this direction, either k, x, or ky is kept constant at zero. Now we'll plot from gamma to m. So here's my gamma point, here's my m point, this is still my k axis. The length here now, remember I said previously, it's not a anymore, it's a times root 2. Let's now look at energies for the gamma point, all bonding. Now at my m point, remember both of them are pi over a, it's pi over a in both directions. What the heck does that mean? It means I've got alternating signs in those contributing atomic orbitals, I'm anti-bonding in both major directions. Can't get worse than that. And so the energy here is going to be higher than this x-point energy. At least x had one direction bonding. This one, zip. Anti-bonding in both. 
join the dots. I've got an infinite number of crystal orbitals as I run up the hill here, going from the gamma point, lowest energy, to the M point, highest energy. That's just reminding you that in this case, Kx is equal to Ky at all cases. And now I can just join X to M. The energies must run up this way. And there's my final band diagram, showing the band energies as a function of direction with all of these fancy symbols there. I can add some pictures of the crystal orbitals halfway along these directions. Here, between tau and x, either kx is pi over 2 while the other is 0, or ky is pi over 2 and kx is 0. Either way, this would be the picture of my crystal orbital bonding in one direction, non-bonding in the other lies halfway along. And I can add the crystal orbital halfway along from tau to m. So along here, kx is always equal to ky. I'm halfway along my k-axis. That means that I'm going to be one half pi over ray for both kx and ky. Here's the picture of my crystal orbital. At this point, everything's non-bonding. We could just be fussy here looking at this pi over 2, pi over 2 crystal orbital, that one's going to be a slightly higher energy than this one along the tau x direction, because here at least one of them is still bonding all the time. So this point is of lower energy than this point. And there's my final 2D band diagram for the s orbitals.